I've had a question bouncing around in my head for quite a long time now. That is, what is and what is not bushcraft? I know this is probably going to offend some people when we get into what I consider to be bushcraft and what I consider to not be bushcraft. Working, working on my definition of bushcraft because it's not going to be the same as everyone else's. There are a lot of people out there who consider themselves bushcrafters and not all of them are going to fit my definition of bushcraft. But I'm not telling people they need to go out and do what I think of as bushcraft. If whatever you're doing that you like doing does not meet my definition of bushcraft, I'm not telling you to start doing what I consider bushcraft. If you want to just keep doing what you enjoy doing, then I say rock on. However, if you end up agreeing with me, you might no longer choose to call yourself a bushcrafter. Now, just because you're not a bushcrafter in my definition of the term, does not make you any less of an outdoors person. You can still be a very skilled and very experienced outdoor person without necessarily doing what I consider to be bushcraft. Now this has the potential to become quite a controversial video because of the subject matter. However, I really do think it could be worth starting up a dialogue and getting people talking about what is and is not bushcraft. And trying to better define what we think of as bushcraft because you know so many people are operating on so many different definitions and this video is mostly just me trying to put forward my way of thinking for consideration by all of you and I would definitely love to see some video responses I'll settle for a comment, I love comments, but I would definitely love to get some video responses trying to tackle the question of what is and is not bushcraft. Sounds like a simple question, but it can get real complicated real easily and has the potential to get controversial. But that being said, I definitely would love to see video responses and to hear all of your opinions. So we should probably get into what I think of as bushcraft. Now what I think of as bushcraft is the pursuit of and the skills of the craft of being in the outdoors. That is what bushcraft is to me. When I think of bushcraft I think of using what is out here using the bush and your skills to look after yourself out here to be self-sufficient out here using your environment and some basic tools now the level of tools and the type of tools you want to take that's up to you now i've been talking about you know the craft of bushcraft and bushmanship. I do not believe that you need to conform to old ideologies of what should and should not be done as an outdoors person, as a bushcrafter. You, know, you get a lot of these purists who seem to think that all oh, bushcraft has to be the traditional outdoor skills of say England you know you get a lot of these people who are kind of ramey as cultists who think if it's not done their particular historic way then it's not bushcraft 
I would give you a hand signal, but it would be inappropriate for YouTube. Me? If it works, it's okay. If you're using what is out here and your skills, what's wrong with that? You don't need to conform to the traditional ideologies of what is and is not bushcraft in the group think of popular bushcraft culture because what is important to people on internet forums is worth about <clears throat> when you're actually out here because it is not worth a damn whether or not you have what is an acceptable style of bushcraft knife when you need a cutting tool out here. If it works, it works. It's just about that simple. You don't need your Scandi grind, Scandinavian traditional bushcraft knife. If it works, it works. Plain and simple. And you do not need to copy or practice all of the skills that people on internet forums or in the popular bushcraft culture say you need to practice. If you are studying the skills you require to look after yourself out in the outdoors, out in the wilderness, using the resources that are there, then that's bushcraft to me. So, what style of knife you're using really is inconsequential. I want to draw a line between campcraft and campers who can be very skilled and bushcrafters. How do we differentiate between the two? Now, to a lot of people, they're going to be the same thing depending on your definition of bushcraft. So the kinds of things I'm thinking of is how do I look after myself out here? What skills do I need to develop to be able to be self-sufficient out here? And look after myself and develop the craft of being out here. And utilizing the resources out in nature to look after myself or just enjoy myself while I'm out here you know kind of the difference between I do not really consider the use of outdoor stoves to be bushcraft that's just me with the exception of stoves that use wood you know, bringing out a hobo stove and then finding your tinder collecting sticks and firewood and whatnot and using that to burn yeah I'll give that one to you I could I will I would consider that to be part of bushcraft but bringing out alcohol stoves or gas stoves you're not really using what's out here sure you're in the outdoors you're looking after yourself you may be boiling your water to make it safe to drink you may be cooking something to eat or just heating up something to eat or drink so it's not very heavy on the bush side of things now is it it's not really much in the way of craft I mean how different is that really to using a gas stove all you've done is take the gas stove from being in the kitchen made it small and portable and now you're using it in the outdoors it's not really a wilderness craft or a, or a wilderness skill set now granted the argument could be made well it still takes the ability to use it but is that really craft and it is in the bush so to some people that would be bushcraft but I'm inclined to go with yeah, no, sorry. Not really what I think of when I think of bushcraft. 
but what would I consider bushcraft? Making a fire and cooking, you know, on an open flame. Sourcing your tinder. You don't necessarily have to use a barrel rod or friction fire or a fire piston or something fancy like that. But if you go out and you just collect all your firewood, you get your tinder, your kindling, you, hell, just use a match or a lighter. That is far more bushcraft than using a stove to me. Now, some other things that commonly see or hear referred to as bushcraft that just really, are just way off are things like, well, let's go through a couple of them, for examples, uh, building survival kits. I do not really consider that bushcraft. I mean, if you are an outdoors enthusiast, if you love going camping, you love going bushwalking or bike riding in the outdoors, if you love going out in the outdoors, and if you acknowledge that you believe you could end up in a survival situation, and you want to put a kit together to help better the odds of you getting out alive, there's nothing wrong with that. Rock on, mate. But I really wouldn't call that bushcraft. I mean, a little Altoids tin. Hey, I got nothing against people putting together survival kits. If you've got your kit together, and it is what you use when you're out in the bush, that's a bit different. That's your outdoors equipment. That's your bushcraft equipment. If you are doing bushcraft, meaning if you are studying and developing the skills for the craft of woodsmanship and you know, looking after yourself out here, the simple process of putting the kit together, nah. Where's the bush side of that? I mean, you're going to use it for the bush, but is it bushcraft? That's a really gray area. I'm going to lean towards no. But when you take that kit out into the bush and you start using it, then that I would consider bushcraft. So if you just put together a little Altoids tin with some Vaseline and cotton balls and your little survival kit, if that's all you do, yeah, sorry. I wouldn't call that bushcraft. But if that's what you want to do, and that's what you enjoy doing, who am I to judge? If you want to do that, feel free to go right ahead and keep doing that. You do not need to validate yourself by conforming to what I think of as bushcraft. If you want to do something for your enjoyment, or you just want to do something to you know, look after yourself, or you want to get prepared, Nothing wrong with that. If it doesn't fit with my, and I do emphasize my interpretation of bushcraft, that's not your problem. Plain and simple, it's not your problem. If you do not conform to what I think of as bushcraft, it's not your problem, it's not my problem, it's probably not anyone's problem. Another thing I commonly see that people refer to as bushcraft is probably one of my pet hates. You know, other than putting Vaseline on cotton balls and saying, Look, I'm a bushcrafter. Now another thing that a lot of self-proclaimed bushcrafters claim is part of bushcraft, yet I strongly disagree with, no matter how many people claim it's part of bushcraft is leathercraft. Now, some leathercraft can be bushcraft. For example, when the Native Americans made their teepees out of buffalo hide, that's still leathercraft, isn't it? Sort of, isn't it? Would you call those skins leather? When indigenous peoples made leather and used it, such as Native Americans with their buckskins and their moccasins and their teepees, if you would consider what they used as being leather, 
Anthony. It's Buffalo Hyde. So I would personally have no problem referring to it as Leather. Although some people would probably argue with me on that point. It's kind of a non-issue. But that kind of leather craft, you know, harvesting it from nature while you're out in the outdoors, utilizing it and using it to look after yourself out in the outdoors like they did, that is so bushcraft to me. What I have a problem with is all of the people referring to their leather craft they do at home as being bushcraft. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting to learn leather craft. I myself have recently bought some stuff because I would like to get into leather craft. Especially because it would be a lot cheaper for me to take the crocodile leather I've got and turn it into stuff than it would be for me to actually go out and buy stuff already made out of crocodile leather. That's kind of off topic. Yeah. I got no problem with people wanting to learn leather craft. I have no problem with people wanting to make really nice backpacks out of leather or nice sheaths or uh, canteen holders. I got no problem with that. I just do not consider it to be bushcraft. Granted, some people will say, oh, but it's my bushcraft knife, or, but I'm making it for the knife I use in the outdoors. So? What difference does that make? So it's related to bushcraft, but is it bushcraft? Well, the kit you put together, I wouldn't consider bushcraft, but taking it out and using it, I would. So, would I consider sitting at home and making a really nice knife sheath to be bushcraft? No. But this does not lessen the skill of leather craft. There's some really nice leather crafters out there who practice bushcraft and use their leather craft skills to make stuff to use for bushcraft and to use when they're in the bush. I just do not consider the leather craft that they do to be bushcraft. Where's the bush side of it? And of course, you know, that relays into a lot of other gear modification type stuff that people seem to think of as bushcraft. Some of that stuff you can actually do out here, but if you're at home honing and reprofiling and you know, working on your tools to maximize their performance that's cool I just wouldn't call it bushcraft so yeah knife sheaths and custom barrel rods and all that kind of stuff yeah I don't consider that to be bushcraft I like it I just wouldn't call it bushcraft alright I hope I haven't offended everybody by now <laughs> but I would like to hear your comments on the matter. So please leave a comment or even better, a video response. I would love video responses. All right, everyone. Have a good one.